I'm ready to listen to what your needs are and fight for you, every one of you, because we have a lot of issues facing our state and nation that we need to address. And that's what I'm known to do, fight. I'm a fighter. As you know, by now, our reproductive rights have come under attack by a group of unelected justices. On top of this, Republicans in the Florida legislature are getting ready to pass an outright ban on abortion. We need to fight to protect abortion rights. That's why this past week I went to the House floor and we Democrats passed a bill to protect abortion rights across the country. Well, it still has to pass the Senate and that's our problem. While the battle may seem lost, I'm ready to fight every day and stand for freedom. Shame on the Republicans who are choosing to take away our freedoms and only want control over our bodies. And the sad part about it, they're only concerned about these children before they are born. By the, when they're born, they can't find them. They don't want to uh, invest in public education or anything that helps children move along. That's not the only thing radical Republicans have been up to right here in Florida. Republicans like Governor Ron DeSantis are pushing out fake and hateful narratives about our schools having a woke education. Now what that means, I have no idea. As someone who has dedicated my life to education as a school principal, as a district director, as a school board member, and now through 5,000 role models of excellence, and as a chair on the Committee on Education and Labor, I can tell you with absolute certainty, there is no such thing as woke education. And critical race theory has never been taught in any kindergarten through 12th grade school in this country. DeSantis is trying to spark a fake culture war that doesn't exist. And we need to call him out on this nonsense every chance we get. In the process of sparking this culture war, he has enacted hateful anti-LGBTQ plus legislation. These are our neighbors and our children that we are breaking down. My brother was gay, Thoroughly Smith. He was the first black reporter for the Miami Herald. I'm thinking about all of the gay children who may be afraid to talk about who they are when they are in school. Enough is enough. We need to protect the rights and freedoms of every person and put an end to this culture war. Instead of addressing a fake culture war, we should get back to the issues that are going to affect our residents, like climate change right here in Miami Beach. Miami Beach and the rest of Miami-Dade County will be ground zero for the effects of climate change. We need to protect our environment so future generations can enjoy this beautiful community like many of us do right now. Republicans are anti-science and they refuse to invest money into science or listen to it. We need more science in Congress and I'm not seeing much science on the Republican side. We also need to ensure that we're paying close attention to Israel and the rising tensions in the region. We must stand with our allies in Israel and work to prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons. And the attacks on Israel aren't just across our border, but are also we see rising anti-Semitism right here in our community. Everyone deserves to live their lives free from hatred and discrimination. 
So we must stand against anti-Semitism in our backyards. And I'm committed to doing just that. I'm just getting warmed up, but we have so many other issues on the line this election cycle from gun violence, addressing our rising inflation, voting rights, health care, prescription drugs, and so much more. And what are Republicans doing? They're sitting on their hands and voting against reproductive rights, voting against legislation to reduce the price of gas, have restrictions on the right to vote, and they are working against American people. It's time to put the brakes on the Republicans' reign of terror. So how do we do this? This is how we do it. First, we need to get educated on the new election laws in Florida and how it affects each and every one of us and each and every one of our neighbors, family, and friends. For instance, to vote by mail, you are now required to provide an AD, an, an identification card before signing up to vote by mail. If you don't vote for a certain period, you are taken off the voter roll. In fact, you could have been purged already. So check to make sure that you are still a registered voter. It's important for all of you to check your voter registration status to sure that you are ready to vote. On my end, I'm going to host a teletown with all of our elected officials to let constituents know how these no, new voting laws really affect them so they will not be caught off guard come October, August and November. And finally, we need all of you to get involved because we can't go back as a society. We need to move forward. The only way we can do that is by taking action. So I'm asking you to be a game changers, to be fighters, because we can't just sit on the sidelines this elections. That means we all need to vote. Get our neighbors out to vote, get involved in the democratic campaigns up and down the ballot. So Miami Beach Democrats, can I count on you to stand by me in this fight to help us win the fight for our freedom. We must step up and make our voices heard in this critical election. And I'm counting on each and every one of you to step up and I will fight alongside of you so that we can make our voices heard. I'm Congresswoman Fredrika Wilson I'm here to fight alongside of you and you can count on me to fight for you every single day. Thank you for your attention. And I yield back. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Um, does anyone have any questions for our Congresswoman before she goes? Okay. Uh, Elaine Bloom. I also want to recognize Elaine Bloom being oh, here. Oh, Elaine Bloom. Where's yeah. Elaine Bloom? <laughs> please, please unmute yourself and, and, and... I don't know how to do this. Let's see. How do I unmute? Okay. Oh. Hi there. Um, Hi. <laughs> I'm, I feel very responsible for Congresswoman Frederick, Frederico Wilson getting into politics because I think it was 1990 two or three when she was chosen as the principal of the year in, uh, at that point, Dade County. And I convinced her that she should run for the school board. So, Frederica, you've been a blessing every single year since then. And uh, I know that you're new to the Miami Beach part of your district, but uh, I think many of us know and admire all that you've been doing for all these many years. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I have a question. Oh my God. This is and Representative awesome. Joseph Geller. I have a question for the Congresswoman. Congresswoman, yes. we hear all this doom and gloom. Uh, what do you think our chances are, Democrats holding the House and maybe expanding our majority? 
I think that uh, our chances are great as long as we remember that you as elected officials or you as leaders in the community that you 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 don't uh, give up. You have to keep on pushing and fighting until election day. And I always tell people, never go to the polls alone. If you have a sports car, take one person. If you have a sedan, take four people. <laughs> if you have a van, take eight. If you have a bus, take 50. Take everybody to the polls and everyone you know, everyone in your family, we must, we can outvote these crazy people. We can beat DeSantis. I believe that, and I, and I don't wanna play favorites because we still have a primary and it's not good to select someone, but I believe the hateful rhetoric that this man has strewed across this nation has angered people angered women, women who want to make decisions about their own bodies. You know, we hear about the 10 year old child who was raped. What about the 60 year old woman who is still fertile, who has been raped? She will have to take that baby to term. Can you imagine? So I think there are people who are angry and who will, are willing to fight and willing to vote. And then I think that there are um, Republican people who don't want us to know that they're scared of DeSantis and won't vote at all. Thank you. There's a question in the chat. You want to read it out? Um, so on that on that note, um, Congresswoman, what will be done to get out the vote? I think you said a little bit about it, but Art asked. <clears throat> you have a question? Oh, yes. It was in the chat. Art has asked, what will you do to get out the vote? Oh, what, what we're doing to get out the vote is uh, sending direct mail to me personally. I will be sending an endorsement from uh, President Biden and an endorsement for, from uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi to all of my constituents, introducing myself, um, making sure that they know who I am, why they should vote for me, why they should vote, period, get why they should go up and down the Democrats, see we would the Democratic uh, column, and uh, making sure that people know that there is an election because this is an off year. Uh, you know, when we have we're not voting for president, people don't really pay that much attention. But it's just lucky that we have an inf a governor that has inflamed so many people that I think that we have a, a great chance. So we will be putting out signs, making calls, going door to door, doing direct mail, uh, and a lot of social media to make sure that people understand how important this election is. And you know, we, I know we say all the time, this is the most important election of your lifetime. Everybody says that. <laughs> but I think this time it's true. It is true. We have a, oh my goodness. We've got to, and we've got to make sure that we do as much as we can to turn Florida blue. You know, we, we, we just have to do that. We can do that. We, we, we saw it with uh, our mayor. Remember, this, you know, we, we voted in a, a female mayor for Miami-Dade County. We saw that, what happens when Democrats get out and vote. That's right. 
Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Thank you for your words. Thank you for joining us and telling us what's going on. Um, and, and we'd love to have you again sometime. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Elaine. I love all of you. Take care now. <laughs> right, thanks. Bye-bye. Uh, so next, I'm um, going to introduce our, our, our next guest speaker, and then we're going to get into the business of the club. Um, I want to introduce Adam Hattersley, candidate for chief financial officer. Uh, Adam is a Navy veteran and served in the Iraq war and was war awarded the Bronze Star for his service. After the Navy, Adam moved to Riverview, which is in the Tampa Bay area, for those of you who don't know. And uh, he set up, he started a business with his wife. In 2018, Adam ran and won a seat in the Florida legislature, flipping a seat, a, a state house seat, um, to a Democrat, to the Democratic column in over a decade. Um, so Adam, please take about 10, 15 minutes to tell us about yourself and the campaign and the floor is yours. Great. Oh, I, I appreciate it. Thanks for taking my time with you today. Uh, I am Adam Hattersley. I'm not just a candidate. I'm a white Democratic nominee. Can you guys hear me? We're having a problem with your audio. Yeah. Maybe if I just scoot a little closer. Is that any better? Okay. I was just saying thank you again, um, and to the Miami, Miami Beach Dems. Uh, I'm not just a candidate for CFO. I'm your statewide Democratic nominee for CFO. I'm the only statewide Democratic candidate with no primary, so we're already off to the races. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, David mentioned a little bit about me, but I'll just tell you a little bit more about myself and, and why uh, I'm running for CFO and kind of what that is. Before I get into that, though, who knows what the CFO does? Anybody? A couple of people. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's not the sexiest of the positions on the cabinet, but it's really one of the most important. It's the head of the Office of Insurance Regulation. It's the state treasurer. It's the state fire marshal. It's on the state board of administration and the clemency board. You know, just boring ones. But really, like I said, it affects your life vastly more than any other cabinet position. Uh, so just a little bit more about me. Uh, I grew up in Littleton, Colorado. Uh, home of Columbine High School. Uh, I did not go to, to Columbine. I did have some friends that were there. So it's on a side note, whenever I see things that happen, you know, like in Texas a couple months ago, you know, it, it just, it always just hits a little harder coming from growing up in Littleton. Uh, but from, from there, I went to the University of Michigan. Do you have any Wolverines? Anybody? Oh, uh, that's disappointing. Uh, well, I went to the University of Michigan. I have bachelor's and master's degrees in aerospace engineering. So technically, I am a rocket scientist. Uh, when I was in Michigan, I was also a member of the 1999 NCAA National Championship Men's Gymnastics team. And uh, believe it or not, I'm still an international judge to this day. Uh, in fact, almost a week ago, just uh, on a Tuesday, I got home. I was in Cairo, Egypt, representing the United States, judging at a, a major international competition. Um, but then after my time in college, I, you know, this kind of sense of service that my father had, had built into me, I guess, uh, growing up, really kicked in, and I joined the United States Navy. I was commissioned an officer about three weeks before September 11th. Then I went through submarine and nuclear power training, and I spent eight years as a nuclear submarine officer. I deployed on a fast attack submarine out of Pearl Harbor. Uh, in fact, uh, man, people are still just can you hear me. Uh, my very first underway on my ship. Is this any better? A little closer? Anyway. No? Hmm. Well, I'll just kind of keep going. Yeah. I don't have a microphone. Adam, sorry to interrupt you. Maybe if you had, do you have uh, earbuds or a microphone? It might help. I, I'm not technical, but that possibly could. Yeah, let me, someone had a good idea. I'll call in for my phone. Maybe. If I can. Hold on. I'll call back in in a second. I apologize. I'll be right back. So since he's calling in back in, um, let's call Natalie. Are you Natalie, do you want to tell us about you? I'm, I'm skipping a little bit to new business while Adam calls back in. But Natalie um, Kaufman, if you could tell us about uh, registering young voters. Natalie, are you here? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, you know, we're on the subject tonight about getting out the vote, and I just wanted to share my personal experiences on the ground. Um, I am finding young people uh, very eager to register, and I really think this year we can turn out young people like never before. Um, and I'm wearing my latest creation. I don't know if you guys can see it. It says, say gay with your vote. I've created this t-shirt. There's a QR code. Anybody can point a phone and register right then and there on their phones at vote.org. And I'm telling you, it's bees to honey. The young people are approaching me. Usually I have to beg and plead for them to, you know, convince, for me to convince them to register. And this year, I really think this is the icebreaker, this and Roe, young people are pissed. They are pissed and they are ready to vote. And we just need to ask them. Um, I'll give you one example. I was at the bakery this weekend and all you have to do is ask. You know, the woman who was ringing me up was probably 20 something and I just said, I'm out volunteering to register people to vote. Are you registered to vote? And she said, oh, I've been meaning to do that. Point the thing. There you go. And I have gotten nine young people registered in the last week. So I just want to encourage everyone in our club. I know we all have our own superpowers. Maybe you're not comfortable trying it, but I'm telling you, in years past, young people have been like, nah, not now, whatever. This year, they are ready. All it takes is asking them. Um, and if anybody's interested in the t shirt, I'm producing them, you know, contact me. Uh, I'm offering that you can buy one or you can sponsor one. I'm giving them away to the free to the young people for free so they can register their friends. And I really think that's how we'll build exponential participation here in Dade. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Natalie. And, and the chat group is a lot of people interested in, in your shirt and, okay. and learning more. So if you could put your contact information in the chat room, that'd be great. And I believe Adam Hattersley, are you, are you back? I am back. Can you hear me oh, now? The floor is yours. I can hear you now. Okay, fantastic. Sorry about that. Um, I guess I'll just kind of start over. So hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm Adam Hattersley. I'm your statewide Democratic nominee for Chief Financial Officer and a spot on the Florida Cabinet. I'm the only statewide Democratic candidate without a primary, so we're already headed to go to November. Um, and before, you know, I asked some people raise their hands uh, when I asked if they knew what the CFO does. Uh, and not too many people did. So it's the, it's the state treasurer, it's the head of the Office of Insurance Regulation, it's the state fire marshal, it's on the clemency board, you know, like all the really non-sexy jobs. But it, it really is very, you know, super important and it affects you far more than, than pretty much all the other cabinet positions put together. So a little bit about me, and I, I apologize for repeating some of this, but a lot of people couldn't hear me. So I went to the University of Michigan, uh, and nobody raised their hands when I asked if they were Wolverines, so that was a little disappointing, but that's okay. We can work on that. Um, I have bachelor's and master's degrees in aerospace engineering, and I was also a member of the 1999 NCAA National Championship men's gymnastics team. And uh, believe it or not, I'm still involved with, with USA Gymnastics to this day. I'm an international judge. And just this past week, about six days ago, I got home from a, a trip to Cairo, Egypt, where I represented the US uh, judging a, a major competition over, uh, over in Egypt. It was super cool. Um, anyways, after my time at Michigan, I joined the United States Navy. I was commissioned an officer uh, about three weeks before September 11th. Oh, and Sherry Rubin is a double Wolverine. Hail to the victors. Uh, so I was commissioned an officer in the Navy about three weeks before September 11th. Uh, then I went through nuclear power and submarine training and deployed on a fast attack submarine based out of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. My first underway on the ship, uh, another ship from my squadron fired the very first missiles of the second Gulf War in 2003. Uh, and, you know, and after that, that deployment, we spent some time in the shipyard, which we were scheduled to do, which if you've ever been in the Navy, you know that sucks. Uh, but then after my time in the ship was over, I forgot what Navy stands for. And do we have any vets in the, in the group? Hopefully there's some, some hands raised. Uh, but as a little joke we say in the service, Navy stands for never again volunteer yourself. And uh, I, I forgot that. And I volunteered for a combat tour in Iraq with an Army Special Operations Unit. I was there from 2006 to 2007. The second half of my tour was the surge. It's kind of during the height of the war. I was maybe 30 miles away when Saddam Hussein was executed and went on over 200 combat missions there in the desert. And after that tour was up, I went to be a professor at the United States Naval Academy, which was a great job, highly recommended. 
Uh, and then my wife and I moved to Australia for a year because, you know, why not? Uh, and then I got a job here in Florida. We were uh, in Australia. Uh, we were right in downtown Sydney. We could see the bridge and the opera house from our apartment right on, on uh, William Street in Willamaloo. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then I got a job here in Tampa working for a for, uh, Fortune 500 company doing financial and data analytics and helping to manage about 5,000 people all over the world. Uh, and then in 2016, my wife and I opened our own small business. And then, you know, and, but we were never really involved in politics very much. Uh, you know, after the, the 2016 election, you know, we actually had an election night watch party at our house. We were excited to, to finally see the United States elect its first female president. And uh, by 9.30, my wife had kicked everybody out of the house. And in the morning, she woke up and looked at me and just said, fix it. I was like, fix it. Like, what do you want me to, what do you want me to do? Uh, so we started looking into to politics and starting to get involved a little bit more. And we started to support some of our local candidates. And then in, in 2018, uh, actually it was March of 2018, we started getting all these phone calls saying, hey, Adam needs to run for the state house. From people we had never met, We're like what the heck is going on? Turns out somebody had filed to run for, uh, for my district that the last time they were in office, they were responsible for banning LGBT pride in Hillsborough County for about eight years. And, uh, you know, my brother-in-law is gay and he, didn't, he and his husband adopted a baby here in Florida. If it was up to this person, our, our family would be illegal. And uh, sorry for swearing, I was a sailor for eight years, but I thought that was bullshit. And there were no Democrats standing up to run against this person. You know, and even though it was an R plus nine district, you know, and voted Republican by nine points in the 2016 election, you know, I felt like I had to give people a choice. So I, I decided to run. Uh, we were a, a small and scrappy campaign. We had no help from the state, no help from the county. It was just my wife and I. And on a shoestring budget, we flipped the district by over 12 points. And I became the first Democrat to represent Eastern Hillsborough County in the legislature in close to 25 years. You know, when I got to Tallahassee, I was, I was really excited, you know, to, to have that sense of service again, like I did when I was in the military. And I know there's, I know Joe's on, on the call, but who else, who, who's been to Tallahassee during session? Anybody with a raising hand? Okay, David, a few others. Elaine Bloom. Hello, yeah, former Rep Bloom. Um, I know it's different now than it was, than it was uh, when Rep Bloom was there, because all I saw was political theater and corruption everywhere I looked. You know, after over 20 years of single party rule, I saw a system that needs to be flipped on its head. You know, I saw a chief financial officer who's been been more interested in just kind of chasing after Ron DeSantis's heels and getting a little pat on a head like a, you know, like a like a good boy instead of just doing his damn job. You know, and make no mistake, the current CFO in his absolute failure to address the property insurance crisis in Florida, he's cost every single person on this call, every single person in Miami Beach and every single person in Florida money, and not a little bit of money. I don't know about you, who's seen their property insurance bill, or if you're a renter, seen your rent go up, every hand should be up. Mine went up 83%. I talked to someone in the panhandle, it tripled. And we, we've seen this, this problem coming down the pike for at least five years. And the CFO has done exactly nothing to, to stop it or to help consumers. All they've done is rubber stamp everything that insurance companies and the insurance lobbies want to get through. And, and it's just made the system sick. You know, someone made an analogy to me, you know, if uh, there's like a little kid who just gets everything they want and then just gorge themselves on candy, eventually they get sick. And the Florida property insurance market is sick. And we are absolutely in crisis. Joe can tell you what happened with this special legislative session that was supposed to, supposed to fix property insurance, but instead, it just made it harder for you to get representation. It raised your rates, it lowered your coverage, and it gave a $2 billion bailout to the insurance companies. We need a change. All of this is costing every single one of you money. This is not a Democratic issue. It's not a Republican issue. It's not an independent issue. This is a Floridian issue and a family's issue and a, and a future issue. And if you want to be able to pay for your kid's college we have to lower some of these costs. I've talked to some folks that are on fixed incomes, some seniors who've been forced to sell their longtime homes because they can no longer afford to pay their property insurance premiums and they have to go somewhere else. This is like, I just, I just get so frustrated sometimes when, when I talk about this because we don't have to be like this in Florida. 
you know, that we, we can we can protect our citizens and have a good market for property insurance at the same time. Those don't have to be mutually exclusive, you know, and and all the Republicans are doing, you know, and I don't even really call them Republicans anymore. I call them the reckless right, because a lot of these policies and Congressman Congresswoman Wilson was talking about it are just reckless and chaotic. You know, the reckless right that the, the one thing they're really good at, and I bet we can all agree on this and they're better than Democrats are, they're really good at messaging. They message using emotion and fear. And that's why it works. You know, we message using logic and intelligence, but emotion and fear is gonna trump that out every time. And that's why it works. And I hate to say it, but we have to fight fire with fire. You know, we have to challenge them at, at every level, at every race, on every issue and, and keep it simple and keep it emotional. That's how we get people to care enough about, about voting to come out and vote. If anybody was at Leadership Blue this, this week, one of the speakers at the gala, I'm not even gonna, gonna say who, because you know I know everyone likes to stay out of primaries, but toward the end, they said, if you're a woman, stand up. You know, and half the people in the room stood up. Then the candidate said, if you support women, stand up. Everybody else in the room stood up. That's how we win. We find a, a simple and emotional issue that everybody can get behind and mobilize people on that. So thank you again for letting me speak to you. I would love to answer some questions. I have another one of these here in, in eight minutes. Yes, including in Spanish uh, that Art said. That's a fantastic comment. And in Creole, if we can. But I'd love to take some questions you know, about how our campaign is going, you know, how we're working with the coordinated campaign, more what the CFO does, and, uh, and how we can help. By the way, it's adamforflorida.com, big giant yellow donate button right, right up there in the, uh, at the top. You know, it's maize and blue colors, so you can't miss it. I'd, I'd love to take some questions if you have any. Thank you, Adam. A any questions? Just come on out and ask anybody. Oh, Sherry Rubin, calling on you. Okay, am I unmuted? You're unmuted. We got gotcha. you. Good, all right. Um, Adam, I'm wondering, kind of apropos of what we were talking about earlier with um, young people, and I taught high school for 25 years, and I think that <clears throat> Natalie Kaufman is on point, exactly. Young people are really mobilized, and I think that we would underestimate the impact that the overturn of Roe v. Wade has on them at our peril. And I think we should grab the opportunity. And I'm wondering what your campaign and just your um, service has done to directly reach out and engage uh, people say 18 to 30. No, that's a, that's a great question. You have a, 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 an excellent point. You know, the Republicans, I think, and Congressman Wilson was right here, they have overreached and overstepped and it's pissed off so many people, especially the younger generation. I don't know if, if you guys know that the group 18 to 44, the quote unquote young Democrats, make up just over 50% of the voting population of Florida. If that group wanted to, they could decide every single election. That's why I've been working with the, the Florida Young Democrats, with the Florida College Democrats, strangely enough with the group, the Florida High School Democrats. They have such great volunteers. Uh, they come out and canvas with us and, and, and help us out all the time, but they're helping us mobilize the folks on college campuses for when they're home in the summer right now to go out and, and canvas and talk to their friends and start bringing these folks into the fold. Because you know, these people are, they're pissed. They're pissed off and rightfully so. It, it is absolutely time to get mad. Um, you know, and, and believe it or not, my, my wife is an activist here in Tampa and her cause and the group she, that she's with, they call themselves the Fierce Tampa Warriors, FTW, also, you know, for the win or blank the world. Um, but they put on, geez, I think five major rallies, a couple of them with over 5,000 people for abortion rights, uh, yeah. for reproductive rights. And I've been yeah. to every single one of those. And uh, we've engaged people that they come out and they say, I've never been political. I've never been to a protest. Yep. Let me sign up. How do I volunteer? I'm ready to go this year. So this stay. one comment and then I like this issue for that young cohort is what women's issues were in 2016 when they did the massive women's march. That's where you get the people that say, I've never been political, but this is too much. I've had it and I'm getting involved. 
Yep. People are pissed and there's no better motivator than anger. And we need to grab onto that anger. It's, it's emotional and it goes to, to fear because people should be, they should be afraid, you know? Oh, yeah. Like let's, let's call a spade a spade. Women have been relegated to second-class citizens. You know, again, the Congresswoman mentioned it, a 10 year old in Ohio, what the hell are we doing as a country? You know, so we, we have to grab onto that, that fear and that emotion and that anger. And, and that will drive people to the polls. When people are happy, they like the status quo. When they're pissed off, they get active. And we got to latch onto that. I agree. What else? And go blue, Sherry. <laughs> uh, any other questions? I know, Adam, you have to leave. Uh, I don't know if I see any other hands up. Cheryl, is there a there's another question. Uh, how can we turn the CFO role and the rise of insurance costs to address people from, from an economic point of view uh, from, from Cheryl, right. um, which is a, another great question. You know, um, property insurance right now has been listed as the number one barrier to new home ownership in the state of Florida. And what's the first step of building, building generational wealth and starting to build a retirement? It's buying a home, right? And now, the communities that have been affected by this property insurance crisis the most are people of color and people under the age of 40. This, this is absolutely an economic issue for, for people's futures. You know, it's not just the, the younger, younger crowd and, and minorities, but young families that I've talked to somebody, uh, you know, they, they had to cancel their vacation this year because they have to pay that, that extra property insurance bill. I think there's one up over 60%. Nothing gets gets Republicans, especially, and I call them light red Republicans and even right leaning NPAs motivated more than their wallets and their bank accounts. When we can get that message out there that the current CFO has, for lack of a better term, screwed them and stolen money from them that they should be using to provide for their families and for their futures. We get a lot of crossover. I did an event geez, two weeks ago. I was the only Democrat in the room. There's about 40 people in there and they were all Republicans that were pissed off at our current CFO because they know what he's been doing or failing to do in addressing property insurance and rent. So uh, no, we have, it's absolutely an economic issue. And you know, if we can't hit him in, in the emotion and the fear, we can hit him in the wallet. So we have a, a lot of great opportunity here. This is actually the most winnable of all the cabinet races. The current CFO is uh, a, a poll by the Democratic Governors Association, had his statewide name ID at under 7%. And, you know, being a former state rep, and I ran for Congress in 2020, uh, my name ID was only about a point behind his. And luckily, the people who know who the current CFO is are all pissed off at him because he's cost them money. You know, so we are going to we're, we're looking forward to a lot of good crossover on this one. Thank you. Uh, Representative Geller, then Susan Holden. Yes. Um, less of a question than just to say I served next to Adam Hattersley while he was in the state house. He's thoughtful, he's persuasive, and he works very, very hard. I really encourage everybody on this call, if you want to see some changes in the state, if you gave him your pocket change, if you gave him you know, what you were going to spend uh, the next time you um, valet parked, if you did something that won't change your life, but if we all did it, it might help him change our state. So just because you can't, you know, if you don't feel like, uh, you know, a thousand dollar contribution is in your future, please do something, something to help Adam. 25 bucks, 15 bucks, a hundred bucks. If everybody on this call did that and got two people to do it, it would start to have real impact. He's a tremendous guy and a tremendous political leader, a tremendous candidate. Please do something to help him. Thank you, thank you Joe. That was very kind. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, and Susan, you'll have the um, last question. Hey, Adam, as someone who actually uh, makes their living as a CFO, I'm curious whether anybody asks you about CFO actual credentials. Like you have amazing political credentials and you're idea of going after property insurance as a pocketbook Republican issue, I think is totally spot on. You might even convince my father, who's a Trumper in Naples to vote for you. But um, uh, is there any like, like, does anybody care like that you maybe don't have a CFO kind of background? 
Uh, well, I did do, you know, data and financial analytics for a major, you know, uh, Fortune 500 company for about seven years. But do keep in mind everything that I told you about myself, the current CFO, his daddy gave him a fish restaurant and he was appointed to the role because he sucked up to Rick Scott. These roles okay. are really about leadership. You know, the current CFO, Jimmy, he's not in the back there with the abacus doing the state's taxes. About 4,000 people work for the CFO's office across the state. These are about leadership and setting the direction and the priorities of the office. And Jimmy has done, like I said, exactly zero to protect consumers. And uh, that's that's where the real difference is. Yeah. I have to say, it's I didn't even realize it was an elected office. But so you can beat him then on just credentials alone, which is great to hear. Oh, Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Adam, for joining us. And make sure you drop uh, any of your, you know, website contact information in the chat group for where people can donate, help out, et cetera. And, you know, thank you so much for joining us and, and meeting our club. I appreciate it again. Thank you. And I did put my, my website is up there in the chat. So uh, I appreciate you guys chatting. I'm going to be down in Fort Lauderdale on Sunday. And I know we're coming down to the Miami area uh, here either later this month or early August. So hope to hope to see some of you in person soon. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Hey, thanks again, everybody. Good night. Thanks. All right. Next up, we're going to get into the business part of the meeting. Um, I'll make my part real quick because we definitely have some more people who are going to be speaking. Uh, Steve, can you put up the slide? Is that something? Yes. OK, thanks. So I, I just want to go over. We have some upcoming events. Um, and, and Steve, I'll, I'll, if it's okay with you, I'll have you talk about our text banking and all the great things that are going on there. But Saturday on the 23rd, we have text banking. Um, Monday, we have another happy hour with an hour of action at Barceloneta. It was a lot of fun before. Um, 815, we have our August general meeting. That's August 15th. And I believe we're having uh, the, our county mayor is gonna be one of our guest speakers at the next general meeting. Um, on the 23rd, we have a primary watch party at Whitman's. Uh, so that would be amazing if you all can come out and join us. And in October, I know that's several months away, but we're having our Halloween party fundraiser. And of course, we're gonna continue to send all this information out via uh, our emails and social media, and it's on our website. And also, um, yeah, July 22nd through 24th, the Florida LGBTQ Dems Summer Conference is being held, I believe, down here in South Florida, maybe Broward County. Uh, so I know many of us are going to be going. That's a great event. I've gone to several of their events, so I encourage uh, as many members of the club to go as possible. Um, for, for my report, in addition to the events, I just want to say, um, you know, we August with well, August 23rd, I believe is primary day. It's 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 coming up fast. Um, we've been spending a lot of time talking with the coordinated campaign, uh, with the county party, with the you know the statewide campaigns, and we're, we've been putting together our plan. Um, and you're going to hear about a lot of that soon when Antonio speaks. Uh, so there's that going on. We also are working on a candidate forum. There's there's several. Um, contested primary uh, campaigns going on. So we're gonna be, we're looking at August 11th for that date. So we'll be sending out more information there. Um, and with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it off to my officers. Um, Steve, do you wanna go first? And then I'll call on Aaron. Sure, so um, one of the big things we've been doing over the past month is we've, uh, we've been texting voters, P2P texting, where you have a bunch of people sitting down sending individual texts so that they can get replies. And um, we, it was the first month we've done it. Uh, we spent $350 and you can get about 14,000 texts for $350. We got a little bit fewer than that, but we sent all of them in over the course of four text banks. We had a couple different messages, but we were focusing on people in Miami Beach and in uh, pretty much in Miami Beach. One of the messages we sent out was regarding, um, hey, sign up for vote by mail if you, because we know that you haven't or you're about to expire. And then we sent out some texts, um, getting people ready for the primaries and hey, the primary's coming up. Um, um, are you ready to vote? And we've learned some things about what kind of messages uh, 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 get people to respond and which don't. Like if you ask them a question, you're more likely to respond. And as we did our text banks, 
we got better and better at getting replies so that the last text bank we did, uh, more than 10% of the people we texted replied. Uh, you know, we th and that's a positive, we're engaging people. Um, as you saw this Saturday, we will be, uh, our next text bank is this Saturday and our plan is to uh, do it every Saturday up until the primary uh, with that message. Hey, we got a primary, come out, turn out and vote. Uh, so we're, uh, we're learning as we go. It's the first time we've done the text banks, but we think it looks positive. So uh, keep an eye out. By the way, um, Saturdays from one to three is when we do the text banking and you'll be seeing uh, more information about that coming out in our communications. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you, Steve. Aaron, are you, are you yeah, Aaron's here. Aaron, uh, your turn. I am here. Um, good to see everyone. Aaron Boslin, um, chair of the organizing committee. My new puppy, Rex. Uh, <laughs> you know, my boyfriend has a full grown pug and to, I see Natalie's shirt. We weren't saying gay loudly enough. So now we have a pair of pugs to go along with our, <laughs> with our whole thing. Um, so anyways, I have three, I have three announcements. Um, the first is, and my apologies to Steve, this was only finalized today. Um, so this was an oversight on my part, not anyone else's, but we're very excited that we just finalized the detail. We got some terrific guests to come to our next neighborhood conversation. That's the first thing. Uh, and the neighborhood conversations, for those who haven't been um, familiar with it, is we have a group of 15 to 20 people come together and we have a couple key people who are featured and it's either in a specific area. So like, for example, the one we did in Collins Park, we, took, we worked with the Collins Park Neighborhood Association. Um, and we, uh, or we have it around an issue. And so our next one is going to be July 26th, and it's going to be on the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Uh, it's going to be held at 11th and West. We'll send out the exact address. It's in the Mirador building. And thank you to Amanda for getting that space available. But it's going to feature Dr. Lynette Long, who is a more than 30 years of experience uh, activist on women's rights and a retired professor um, who has uh, deep experience in, in any number of domains, including writing plays and, and lobbying at the local and state level, um, as well as Marianne Ruiz, who is um, the chair of Ruthless Miami, um, which I see Representative Elaine Bloom is on. She was a founder of Ruthless, um, one of the strongest. Oh, you were? No. As a matter of fact, um, Ruthless has never, ever, ever contacted me. Really? I had always said really, Ruthless. really. And I was a founder of Emily's List. Emily's List. Okay. Okay. Um, so Ruthless is our floor, which the. the Got to fix that. Um, Ruth's list elects pro-choice Democratic women, just like um, Emily's list that Representative Bloom was a founder of. Um, and so we're going to have a neighborhood conversation, uh, 11th and West. And the idea is an informal space to come and talk about issues. And then we follow up with everyone who comes and see what their level of interest is. So they engage in us. It's a non-transactional thing. And then we have 15 to 20 more people that we can do one-on-ones with and work on organizing and figure out how they can be involved uh, in whatever ways work best uh, for them. That'll be uh, on the um, that'll be on the 26th. And then about two weeks later, we're finalizing the details. We're going to do one with the Parkview Island Neighborhood Association on the environment. So that one will be in North Beach. So we're going around literally and, and figuratively meeting people where they are, talking about the issues closest to them. Um, and that's part of our ongoing strategy to get as ready for the election as possible. Second thing is that we're dividing right now, and I see some people who've been very involved, you know, Steve Hawes, Stephen Cohen, um, uh, Marsha in the past, um, and what we're going to be doing uh, shortly, and we're working with the coordinated campaign on this, is dividing Miami Beach into three different parts, so north, mid, and south, um, and we're going to have some version of a captain in each, and then what we're going to do is that person will be sort of like the, the coordinator who can then work with everyone in that area, and we already have, thanks to Stephen Cohen and some other people who have done work on gathering data, Steve Hawes, um, uh, making sure that we then have identified all of the people who want to say, you know, I know people in this building, I know people in this association, and literally map out at a granular level, what are the buildings we know people that we can get access to, all of the things that those of us who have canvassed in October of an election year, and then said, you know, what are all these things we should have done three months ago, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so if you're interested in that, either to be one of those three coordinators, please shoot me an email, I'll drop my email in the chat right after, um, or if you don't want to be one of the like top people, but you want to you know, leverage your contacts. I'm completely convinced that between the members of our club, um, we have access to all of the key groups, the neighborhood associations, the people who, you know, know what makes things move in different parts of our, of our community. Um, so please sort of be on deck for announcements about that. Uh, but those coordinators are coming and then we're going to ask for individual uh, input. And then finally, 
it's not entirely related to my role, but it is organizing. Um, if you look at the chat, um, there is on April, on uh, August 6th at 4 p.m. in Fort Lauderdale, a pro-choice women's bikers rally that in my role with Men for Choice, uh, I'm going to be supporting. And so if that interests you, um, there are, are a ton of organizations on board, Ruth's List and Women's March Florida and Florida Rising and various party groups. Um, and they're looking for as many people to be supportive in various ways as possible. So I'm organizing um, groups of both men and women uh, to go in support uh, of that event uh, on August 6th. So if that interests you, sort of keep that in mind. Uh, it's a different way to get some publicity um, around uh, issues of choice on August uh, 6th that members of our club can be supportive of if you want to make the trip up with us. That's it. Hey, thank you, Aaron. Uh, Susan, I see your hand up. Um, oh, sorry, Elaine Bloom. You you want to say a few words? Yes. No, I want, I'd like to ask, ask a, question a question of Aaron. Um, is there a way, um, we, I used to help drive people to the polls. Because of COVID, I'm not one of those people who would offer to do that today. But um, I would be happy to make as many calls as possible to people who have received absentee ballots to talk to them and remind them, just drop it in the mail if you don't have another way of getting it to the appropriate place. Is there any way? I think that the camp that the uh, parties are able to get a list of who received absentee ballots. Is that true? Yes. And also, can you tell me? Uh, I don't know whether David, whether David Geller, whether you mentioned it to begin with. Um, what is the story with absentee ballots right now? Uh, if you had them had it one for the last election, is it automatically going to come this time? I would love to let. Representative Joseph Geller possibly answer that question because he might know it off the top of his head and, and speak about it a lot better than I would. So, Representative? You're on mute. You're on mute. My understanding, such as it is, is that they will still get their absentee for this election. But come January 1st, no one will be on the absentee list. But my understanding is that people who've signed up previously will still get theirs for this fall. Uh, I called about my status because I've been voting by mail for a long time. And I was told that I'm on the list. I spoke to a live person at the Board of Elections and I was told that I would receive a ballot mail. And she said, I think she said around August 11th. So, but I am on the she I didn't ask her about January, so that's worth knowing. But if you call the Board of Elections, I've gotten wonderful uh, responses because you do get a live person and they ask you some ID and they can look it up right away, uh, whether you are registered and whether you'll get a ballot. So I urge any of you who are interested or not sure to do that. And I go back to my original offer. If we can, if the party can give you access to know who received absentee ballots, we should make sure that we can, we, we do call those people to remind them. Yep. No, I, I, I took a note of that, Representative Bloom, and uh, I'll either follow up with you or it'll go under the voter registration people, but we'll for sure uh, make sure to Thank you. make use of your expertise. Okay, thank you. Uh, Susan, do, do you want to give your report? I see your hand up. All right. Um, okay, there you are. Actually, my hand was up about the question for the oh. CFO guy. Um, and the report is, you know, the, the our cash in the bank is between almost $11,000. So I suggest we spend some before the election. Excellent, thank you. And I'm gonna give the secretary report. We have currently 125 uh, members of the club. Um, any other officers or committee chairs want to give a report? Now's the time. Okay. Uh, moving forward, I'm going to call on Representative Joseph Geller. He's here to speak on behalf of candidate Charlie Chris and also to give us some great words of encouragement for the election. You're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, cousin. Um, I'm very happy to be with everybody tonight at uh, Miami Beach Democratic Club. Always particularly happy to be here with my younger sister, Elaine Bloom. <laughs> People don't know that uh, I helped raise her. Um, 
And I see another one of our great candidates on the phone, uh, on the Zoom tonight, um, our friend James Cueva running in House District 119. If you don't know James, you should. He, um, he just couldn't take it anymore. There was no Democrat really seriously contesting the open seat he lives in and five Republicans running. In fact, that's where David Rivera tried to run. I think that didn't work out apparently, but uh, um, James, wave at the people. I hope you'll get a chance afterwards to, to say a couple words. Um, yeah, I'll him at, yeah. Dave is running. He's running, Dave. Uh, you know, James Cueva, House District 119, an open seat. In fact, it's such a winnable Democratic seat that the Republican who used to be in it, Juan Fernandez Barquin, moved over to 118 that Anthony Rodriguez vacated to run for the county commission and left 119 because it's not a good seat. So uh, I know this is the Miami Beach Club, but if we have anybody uh, who lives in Kendall or has family in Kendall, please spread the word. So I'm here tonight to, uh, to talk on behalf of my candidate for governor, Charlie Crist. I do want to note that following me, uh, Rachel Prestopino is here to talk for our, um, well, not our nominee just yet, but soon enough, uh, candidate for the U.S. Senate, Val Demings. And uh, I was um, uh, a surrogate for her at the Leadership Blue Conference this past weekend. And I could tell you a bunch of great stuff about Val Demings too, but we're gonna leave that to Rachel tonight. Um, she's new in the position, not new to politics. So we're gonna make sure she gets her feet wet. I hope everybody on this call is gonna vote for Charlie Crist. Uh, I'm actually very confident that that'll happen because I hope you'll vote for him in the primary, but whether you do or not, you'll get the chance to vote for him in November. We've got a beat. I got in trouble um, at one of my legislative updates the other day. Apparently, I called the governor an SOB. And some people took exception to it. And I thought I was being nice, considering all the stuff I could have said. Hmm? So I don't think you'll get in trouble here saying that. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, I could... I could use a lot of more colorful terms than that. Um, this guy is just wrong. He's just wrong. You know, I have people that are friends of mine who don't pay attention to politics and they say things to me like, why was he yelling at those kids? They don't even know what it was about. This is just a mean guy. He's just a mean guy attacking the happiest place on earth. And what did they do? They just disagreed with him. They just said, oh, well, we think this bill should be repealed. That's, that's like a crime now. Like when the, the baseball team wanted to vaccinate some people, he threatened them. This is a guy who threatened millions in fines against the Special Olympics. Special Olympics, really? I think he's, I think he's beatable. I think uh, this is the emperor with no clothes on. He's a po like a polar bear. He's the lord of his domain, but there's shrinking land underneath him because he's more and more and more extreme. And the contrast between him and Charlie Crist, Charlie who talks about his own faith, even when it's not the smartest political thing to do because he believes in that. Charlie who wears a golden rule bracelet every day. You know, some people say, oh, he's too nice. Well, he's not so nice that he's not gonna call this guy DeSantis to account. Charlie has a long record in public service. He is the only candidate who actually vetoed an anti-abortion bill. When he was governor and a Republican, 
they had one of these anti-abortion stalking horses that had to do with waiting periods, as if women just, you know, were entering into this decision lightly and they just needed a little time to think about it. Charlie vetoed that bill. It's one of the things that led to him leaving the Republican Party along with a bunch of others. He actually had the temerity to hug the president of the United States, Barack Obama, an unforgivable sin with some of the right wingers in his party. You know, DeSantis is not just using a dog whistle to racists. I mean, it's, it's practically a full blown marching band when he says the Voting Rights Act of 1965 is unconstitutional because it provides an advantage to African-Americans in our society. What country does this guy live in? What planet is he on? I think he's beatable and I think Charlie's the guy to beat him. And frankly, I think that the ticket that's gonna win the way they won in Georgia with Ossoff and Warnock, Warnock and Ossoff, hand in hand, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, cheek to cheek, whatever you wanna say. They did it together and I think we're gonna see that. I think we're gonna see Val and Charlie, Charlie and Val. Val Demings is gonna be the top of our ticket. That's the first race that comes up, US Senate. <clears throat> and I think between her and Charlie, I think they're gonna get the word out to people of every background in this state because we win when we have unity. And I think that's one hell of a ticket that we're gonna have. And I think we're gonna take it to these Republicans. And I just, I, when I ran for the house, you know, I, I try to model myself after Elaine Bloom and I've had to try to have some little bit of the impact that she did. But Elaine was, was so fortunate to be able to be there when Democrats helped run Tallahassee. And I haven't had that pleasure. When I ran, I really thought we would have a Democratic government. I think that time is finally coming now. And let me tell you something. You won't recognize Tallahassee when there's a Democrat sitting again in the governor's mansion. Because those Republicans, I think it'll take about two vetoes that they don't have the votes to override before the message starts to sink in. We have a smart, battle-tested, and most of all, compassionate leader in Charlie Crist. And he's somebody the people in this state know. He's somebody who can't be defined. I don't care how much money DeSantis has. You know, you can do three things with money. You can increase your own name recognition. Well, he has plenty. You can define your opponent. You can't do that to Charlie Crist. Or you can just put out your own message. And if he tries to drop $100 million of message on people's heads, they will hate him. I really think that Charlie Crist is to Ron DeSantis what Joe Biden was to Donald Trump. They said, oh, Joe Biden's a socialist. And people said, Uncle Joe? No. I think that that's a hidden strength. And I think that running as a ticket with Val Demings is going to make the difference. And I think that they're, you know, I know Val will help to bring out that base. And I know that Charlie is going to go to those people who just can't stomach it anymore. I had a friend I spoke to the other day. I said, what are you anyway? And he said, well, I'm a reformed Republican. And I said, what does that mean? He says, it means I can't take what they're doing. I won't have any part of it. I don't approve of it. As we hear how close our democracy came to just being overthrown, we all have to vote. We all have to talk to our friends. I think Charlie is gonna be a guy that leads us to victory and leads us back to making a difference in Tallahassee. So I believe in him. I think he's a good, honest, decent man who will fight to unite all of us and to protect all of our rights. 
I ask each of you to please be with them in August. And if you, you can't, you'll have your chance to be with them in November. So thank you, David. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Representative. Uh, just full, just to tell everybody, I have every month invited both candidates, for, well, before all three candidates for governor to come themselves and say a few words or send a representative. Um, so I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that um, the club, you know, we, we want to hear from everybody in a primary. Um, I did forget a little bit of club business, so I want to go back to that for a second, and then we're going to um, call on Antonio from the FDP. Um, Don't forget, Rachel. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. And Rachel, we're, we're going to go after that. Um, <clears throat> and Rachel's with Val Demings. Um, if anyone, so, so normally I start the meeting out asking if we have any first timers or any new members. So if there's anyone here that this is your first time or your new member, please introduce yourself. Say your name. Hello, everyone. My name is Gustavo Ortega. <clears throat> I am the first timer here and now I'd just like to introduce myself. Um, I'm a special education teacher and I'm running for state representative district 106. Thank you. Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, anybody else? Hello. Um, my name is Rolando Bosch. I came here invited by Antonio. I'm sure he's going to introduce me a little further, but I am a new field organizer and I'm going to be working here in Miami Beach. So I'm going to let Antonio speak, but I'm new here. So I thought I'd say hi. Thank you, thank you. And any anyone else who's new? Elaine. Elaine Bloom. Well, I'm a first timer with this Miami Beach Club and some of you may not have been living here in Miami. I did serve a total of 18 years in the Florida House of Representatives. The last two were 1998 to 2000 with a Republican governor and uh, Joe Geller is correct. It was totally different from when we had our Democratic governor. Um, but I will tell you that um, Joe has done a wonderful job representing us, and I really appreciate all that you have done, Joe, as you go into retirement soon. Uh, and I might add that um, this may surprise some people because I was obviously a big booster of women running for office, but I happen to be supporting Joe Geller's candidate for governor, Charlie Crist. But at the same time, I'm supporting Annette Tadeo for Congress, I'm supporting Raquel Pacheco. Uh, she's running for the, uh, I guess, the state house. Senate. Senate state Senate. Senate. And also uh, Janelle uh, Perez, who's running for the state Senate. And I think, and there's a very good man running, I know in the Kibris Kane area, I don't remember his name. Um, but I'm just mentioning that because though I have been a big booster of women running for office, I think in this race and in this time, that it is essential to uh, support the candidate who can best beat Ron DeSantis. And I believe that Charlie Crist is the one who can do that. Thank you so much, Representative. And I will send my dues. Excellent. I was just going to say, everyone, if it's your first time, please become a member. Please join us. And we look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, I want to introduce Antonio Camejo, who is and, and I, if I misstate your title, please correct me. But you're, my understanding is you're the Florida Democratic Party's regional field director. You cover a huge portion of Miami-Dade County uh, for the coordinated campaign, and Miami Beach is part of that. And uh, we just met uh, part of your team, Rolando. And I'm going to turn the floor over to you, Antonio. If you could tell us about what you're doing and, and you know, how we're all going to be working together, uh, I think our club would love to hear that. So thank you. <clears throat> thank you, David. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, guys. I, I appreciate the invite. Um, you almost got the full title. It's, it's actual regional organizing director, but that's pretty much the same as what you said, so close enough. Um, and yes, I am in charge of a, a pretty big section of North Miami-Dade, basically uh, Doral all the way to Miami Beach and then north up, up until the county line. So everything north of the 836 and Miami Beach. Um, we are, we have three field organizers at the moment with a fourth starting tomorrow uh, that is going to be in charge of the Miami Beach area. You just met him. He briefly introduced himself. Um, his name is Rolando. Um, he's great. Uh, we're, honestly, Miami Beach is an area that we've been. 
Uh, we can't. I, I can't hear you, Antonio. I don't know if anyone else can. But... I can't hear you. Are you saying something, David? Oh, now I hear you. You went oh, blank. Okay. For... okay. All right. Um, so yeah, he's he's gonna start tomorrow. So he'll be. Um, we're doing at this moment. We are doing events um, all over our region on Saturdays and Sundays. We're knocking on doors. Uh, we started a weekday campus on Wednesday as well for people that can't go on the weekends. We are doing phone banks every Thursday. Um, Rolando is going to be setting that up in the Miami Beach area. Obviously, right now he's going to go through training, a little bit of paperwork on his first days, but he's going to be doing that pretty soon. And we're hoping to work together hand in hand with the Miami Beach Democratic Party um, when it comes to the campus, the phone banks, everything. We want to set up everything. Uh, together we're on the same team it makes no sense to try to do things separately so if whether it comes to what area you would prefer for us to be knocking in what kind of phone bank list um you want us to make so that we're calling people there anything and everything would be be to coordinate like that um and we're just looking forward i honestly like rolando will be in touch with a lot of people in the area um and i'm just eager for him to get started tomorrow Wonderful. Thank, thank you so much, Antonio. And, and we really look forward to working with you, Rolando, and your entire team. Um, I guess let me let me start off with a question and then we can take questions from others. Um, you know, I, I think what we're what we're all wondering from the coordinated campaign is, you know, the, the sharing of which targets, like, you know, who are we gonna be doing get out the vote with? Uh, you know, who are we targeting for that? Um, just the logistics, you know, are, are you setting it up and then letting us know we're going to work on it together. If you can maybe walk through how you're doing that, uh, what your what the plan is there. Okay, sure thing. So right now we are focusing on getting uh, registered Democrats to sign up to vote by mail. So we cut lists uh, of a certain area. We knock on 35 to 50 doors every shift. We get the Democrats that are there and we try to convince as many as possible to sign up to vote by mail because, you know, it's proven statistically that if you're registered to vote by mail, there's a higher chance that you're gonna vote in the election. So we want more people to do so. Um, we also have voter registration forms because as we're knocking these doors, we find out about people who have recently moved. Maybe there's somebody in the house with them that wasn't there before and we update the voter registration form as well. Um, we have a lot of leeway when it comes to what locations we're gonna be knocking on for the weekend. So we can always coordinate that with you guys if you guys have you know, suggestions regarding what area would be best for us to knock on a certain weekend, we can focus on that. Um, we're always open to suggestions and new ideas and, and, and to working together in that regard. When it comes to the phone banking, we're doing a lot of uh, recruiting for those events. Um, so we call during the week to get people to come out and you know, knock on doors with us on Wednesday and on the weekends. Wonderful, and Linda, I see your hand up. I think Linda has a question for you. Hi, Antonio. I'm not sure if you can help us, but it is a challenge that we have here with the Miami Beach Dem Club. We're very pleased to be working with the coordinator campaign. I've worked with coordinator campaigns in Maryland. Makes a big difference. But we need, we Miami Beach Democratic Club um, board members need access to van. And we're not having any luck getting that from the Florida Democratic Party, do you have, can you help us with something like that? If you can, please talk to David. He's been doing his best to get them for us, but we're getting nowhere with the Florida Democratic Party. And since you're our original representative, we're gonna ask you for help. And like I said, you can follow up with David because he's he's your sort of your point of contact for us. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Linda. So regarding that, I can tell you two things. I can. Uh, talk to my uh, supervisor to see what can be done perhaps about Miami Beach having access to van. And also on my end, I can help you with van as well. If you guys want a phone bank list cut or a turf cut for a certain area, for whatever reason, you let me know, you give me the parameters that you want and I will provide you with that phone bank list or, or with that turf. I, I'm happy to do it. You just made a lot of friends here, Antonio. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, no, no. 
I appreciate that. We'll be yeah. asking you for certain things from Van then. In the meantime, if you can get access for some of us, that would be wonderful. But thank you very much. I'll put in that request tomorrow. Um, I don't know when my supervisor is going to be able to give me an answer, but I have a call with her every weekday morning, so I'll ask her tomorrow. But uh, meanwhile, until that gets approved, feel free. Hey, Antonio, we want a phone bank list for this weekend based on you know people from this age to this age in this area, whatever you want, whatever parameters. You provide them to me and I'll, I'll give, uh, well, I mean, David would give me the, the info and I will give him the list. I'm, I'm happy to help. There's somebody in the North Miami area that I was helping a few days ago. Uh, and, you know, everything in my region that happens, I'm, I'm free to help that way. Thank you, Antonio. Steve, you have a question? Your hand's raised. Yes. Hey, uh, I, I love this. Uh, thank you. And um, out of all the things that that uh, you mentioned you're doing, I, the thing, the canvassing really pops out, you know, because we've been doing phone banks, text banks. We can do some of that, but uh, we haven't really been out knocking on doors. And so we would love it. Talk to us. And we, we definitely can. There's some unique things about Miami Beach. We have a lot of condos. You can't get into them. So uh, we, we do have some knowledge that I think we can help figuring out what are the best places to canvas. Um, also, I, I'm the communications chair for the club. If you have anything that um, either Miami Beach or even in a, in a regional area around us that you want us to advertise, just get in touch with David, get in touch with me. Let's work together. Uh, really, look, really looking forward to this. Yeah, uh, that, that's a good point, Steve. That That's something that I, I've been an organizer first for six years and now I'm a regional organization director for a year. And uh, there's something I value and my, my supervisor values a lot, which is local expertise. Um, so one, one thing I always emphasized uh, when they brought me on board is to try to make our organizers look like the communities they're representing and to understand them. Um, that's why, you know, some of the, our Spanish speakers, we have an FO who is a Creole speaker. And yes, we would love uh, to be able to get your expertise when it comes to Miami Beach, knowing what communities we can enter. Maybe there's one that looks close, but you know, somebody that lives there, it's always better to, you know, you'll know it much better than us. <laughs> We're brand new at it. We can provide then, we can provide the material that's needed, but when it comes to the actual expertise, that's you guys. You guys are, are the ones that live in Miami Beach. And um, yeah, we would love, you know, to just coordinate before we do any event. Like I said, right now we're regularly uh, scheduling them two shifts on Saturday, one shift on Sunday, and one shift on Wednesday. Um, each shift is about three hours. Um, so yeah, we're doing it in other parts of, of Miami-Dade. I've been wanting to start doing it in Miami Beach for a while, but we didn't have anybody in place. With Rolando starting tomorrow, that's all changed. So um, if, if we can coordinate on that before we have an event for this weekend, you guys have suggestions about where you want us to launch out of, what doors we want us to knock, I would not just be willing to, I would be eager to hear them. You'll Thank definitely you. be hearing from us. Thank you so much, Antonio. And we, we, we all really look forward to working with you and your team. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. I'm going to put my info on the, on the group chat, all right? Perfect. Thank you. And Rolando's too, if possible. Um, next, I want real to... Real quick, real quick. Oh. Sorry, because uh, there is some... Uh, there's a good question that Cheryl asked. I wanted to ask it too. I've also heard the coordinated campaign referred to as Blue Shift Florida. Are they one and the same? Yeah, that's just the name of the campaign for a lot of events that we're saving and mobilized. But yeah, they're, they're both the same thing. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of events for Blue Shift Florida, like if you look on Mobilize. So this is part of the statewide effort, just so so everyone knows. Some of them are are ours. <laughs> My events have the Blue Shift name on it too. It's the same thing. Okay. Thank I have you. a question too. Yeah, Stephen. I wanted to ask you. I'm I'm actually I ran last time and I knocked on twelve thousand doors, so I kind of know the turf. My question for you is why can't you um you know cut the turf by area and send it out and also. Can you do like um, a video session to teach everyone how to use how to use minivan because it is hard to use and it takes time. So if you were able to teach everyone how to use it. Oh, we, we have regularly scheduled minivan training sessions, apart from the fact that we can always do one tailored, you know, specific time and place. That's a great idea. And not everybody is uh, used to minivan and we want to get as close to 100 percent of people to use minivan as possible. Paperless is an option, but minivan is just better for so many different reasons. So yeah, definitely trainings are an, an option. We have a, a training director statewide 
Um, if she's available, that's always the first option we go to because, you know, it's her specialty. But I, I am always uh, available to do that as well as my field organizers are available to do that. And regarding the cutting of the turf, there's several criteria, region, sometimes there's priorities, different reasons that the party wants us to knock on a set of doors for a certain weekend. But like I said, you know, we're open to suggestions, we're open to input. You have a specific area that you want to knock on because it's an important district. That's, you know, that's something we can definitely do. The one thing we can't do is we can't take sites before primary. Um, so when that, that's the case, you know, the person can show up to our event, but we can't officially be taking sites yet. Um, that doesn't really apply to Val Demings because, you know, it's not, it's different from the gubernatorial primary. Um, but yeah, we, we have, I would say maybe like four or five different sets of criteria that we use when it comes to turf and region is, it's one of the most important ones. Thank, thank you, Antonio. And uh, I know it's, it's, it's getting late, but we're gonna go through, we have a few more speakers, so hold on everybody. Um, next, I wanna introduce you all to Rachel, and I apologize if I mess up your last name, Presta Pini, um, who is the South Florida political director for Val Demings, speaking of Val Demings, and she's going to uh, tell us about what's going on with the Val Demings campaign. Rachel, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, David, and very close, Presta Pino. We are almost there. Um, thank you all so much and thank you to Antonio. Um, first, I just want to say, please support Blue Shift, the, the FDP coordinated campaign, because um, some of you may not know that uh, working for Blue Shift is essentially canvassing for Val Demings because, because Val Demings does not really have a primary challenger at this point. Um, or period, she won't. Um, there's uh, some names on the on the ticket, and they're uh, one of them lives in California. Isn't even a, for, a Florida resident. So um, because there's no really established uh, challenger, um, uh, the congresswoman has been able to put um, millions of dollars that we've fundraised into the coordinated campaign, not just to help her get elected, but um, to flip the whole state blue to help Democrats up and down the ticket. So when you're out canvassing right now, when um, those blue shift organizers are going out, they are taking Val Demings literature with them. Um, and that's really the big, a big focus of, of that effort on the coordinated campaign. We're, we're already ready to coordinate, right? Because we don't have to wait until after the primary. So um, that is really our field program right now. So if you've been thinking like, I want to knock doors for Val Demings, go sign up with Antonio, go sign up with Rolando and knock some, knock some doors for Val Demings. Right. But a few things I want to say, and, and thank you to um, Rep Geller uh, for for shouting us out earlier. He was an awesome surrogate. We just um, spent this past weekend at the, uh, the FDP conference, Leadership Blue in Tampa. It was awesome. We like to say that we brought big top ticket energy, um, lots of uh, volunteers. I think we had over 40 volunteers come out and we had uh, and that's just folks who were staffing our table. We had surrogates and and all the caucuses speaking, and then she came and gave um, an address that I think brought the house down um, and really helped to unite the crowd there, the sold out crowd at um, at the conference. And the month of August is going to be huge for our campaign because um, Congress is in recess, and so she's going to be touring, just looping the state of Florida multiple times. Um, on August first, we're actually planning a, a rally in Miami Gardens, um, focusing specifically on you know, Black and African American communities there, but she's going to be back in Miami-Dade um, and the South Florida region generally throughout um, August multiple times uh, because she's just going to, we're going to get a bus. It's going to be a big bus tour. We're really hoping to build up excitement and momentum in, in the month of August. And that momentum is already building something really exciting for us. Um, we have been surpassing Marco Rubio in fundraising every single quarter that she's been in the campaign. But this quarter, I mean, it was literally, it was, it was almost embarrassing for him. He raised $4 million and we wait, we raised $12.2 million. Wow. Yeah. So that's how badly, you know, we've tripled his yeah. fundraising numbers. That is how badly people want to see Marco Rubio go home. Um, we know that uh, we've got, you know, we've got ads out on the airwaves right now that you've probably been seeing really targeting the fact that uh, Marco Rubio does not show up for work and that he's missed uh he has one of the worst attendance records in the senate he misses tons of important votes he doesn't show up for us um but you all in the Miami beach democratic club already knew that 
right? Um, but Congresswoman Demings is, is getting her message out there, really in introducing herself to, um, to voters, especially in South Florida, that may not know who she is yet since she's from you know, her area she represents in Central Florida. So we're really introducing her to South Florida and making sure people know that she's gonna show up for them. So that's just a little bit about what's going on. Um, like I said, I, well, I'm the, the political director for South Florida, so I don't run the field operation. That's really like Antonio and his crew, but um, I'm a point of contact for things like events, um, liaison with local electeds, any kind of referrals you wanna make for me to any organizations that you're okay. all involved in. Um, that is, that is what I do. And uh, prior to this role, I actually was an organizer with faith communities. So I think I recognize Sherry from Temple Beth Shalom and probably a few other folks on the call. So that that's kind of my my anchor and, and Miami Beach is Beth Shalom community. But thank you all for listening. Let me know if you have any questions for me. Any questions? No questions. We'll keep sending her money. Yay. Um, and, You're using I'm it. telling everybody I know all over the country to send her money. So thank you. That's and, great. And, thank you. We're definitely, we're bringing it in and we are using it. And but we'd love you. to, We, you know, please, you know, and I, I know you said this, but please send us, you know, any event information, fundraiser information. We'll, we'll share it with our membership. And, you know, we'd love to see her out here on the side of town and, you know, we just want to help in any way. So thank you so much. Definitely. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, next, I'm going to call on, we have, I believe, two candidates here, James Cueva and Gustavo Ortego. Um, I'm going to call on each of you for one minute. So Gustavo, you, I know you introduced yourself earlier for a second, but maybe tell us a little bit about your campaign in about one minute. <clears throat> okay. So Gustavo Ortega, once again, um, and as I go knocking on doors, one of the questions that I often get asked is, why did you jump into the race? And one of the main reasons, one word pretty much, education. When I looked at the other uh, candidates' platforms, it was originally District 100, there was about three, I believe, candidates. Not one had education. And as an educator, I teach uh, children with special needs, second and third grade at Biscayne Beach Elementary. I found that uh, Mind boggling. Um, so I decided to jump in the race because I truly feel that we need to fight for our children and education is the key to everything. Other than your friends and loved ones, education opens up the doors for everyone. So that's one of the main reasons why I decided to jump in. And obviously as I've been going around knocking on doors, there's a whole variety of issues that we need to tackle, um, especially in Tallahassee. Uh, you know, from the environment to women's rights to the LGBTQ plus community. So there's a lot. And, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight and go up there and knock some heads around to get them straightened out. All right. Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, and what's the seat you're running for? Just so everyone's aware. District 106. Okay. Thank you. Uh, James Cueva, your turn. Thank you, David, and thank you, um, everybody uh, from Miami Beach Democrats. Um, yeah, my name is James Cueva. I'm running it for State House in District 119. That's all the way out west. My district, um, the western boundary is Chrome Avenue, is about as west as you can get without being in the Everglades, um, and runs from Tamiami Trail down to about 232nd Street. Um, you know, uh, uh, like Gustavo said, I'm running for a lot of the same issues. You know, the number one thing, I've always been a very big supporter of civil rights. Um, I am a practicing attorney um, and uh, been a lifelong Democrat since uh, I, I registered as a Democrat to vote for Bill Clinton in 1996 when I was at the University of Florida, um, go Gators. And, um, you know, just, just the legislature and this governor has gone so far to the right um, that we really need to take the power back um, from, from, from this Republican legislature. Um, I'm, I'm running to defend women's rights to choose, LGBTQ plus rights, um, which, which are next in the crosshairs of everybody that wants to roll, roll everything back. Um, the Voting Rights Act needs to be protected. We need to make it easier for Floridians to vote, not more difficult. Um, you know, I'm, I'm for a stronger economy. Right now, inflation uh, is eating away at all of our wages and earnings, making it more difficult for us to earn uh, a living and, and, and make basic purchases like, you know, milk and eggs and sugar. And everybody knows about the gasoline prices. 
Um, so I want to see I want to see better, higher paying jobs for Floridians. I want to see a living wage uh, for everybody here in Florida. Um, those are just a few of the issues. Obviously, um, we need to do more to protect our environment. We need to protect our seagrass beds, which is really sort of um, where the ecosystem starts to starts to, to to flow from. That's really kind of the the cradle of our marine ecosystems or the seagrass beds, and we need to do more um, to prevent the nutrient loads um, from going into our water supply. And that's that's what causes so much devastation throughout the ecosystem. So um, again, I'm running for state house. Um, out west in District 119, and I hope you'll spread the word um, and help me get elected so that I can represent all of our common values in Tallahassee and push back against those who would try to take our rights away and roll, roll back the clock um, on civil rights 40, 50, 60 years. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, James. Do we have any other candidates with us? I want to make sure everyone had a chance to say a, a minute, a few words. Okay. Um, so that that is the agenda we do i, I know uh marcia brought up a uh, new business but it's also 8 40 so um my suggestion marcia maybe we can chat about your question um offline and we could chat maybe tomorrow and and talk it through um and, and unless anyone else has any new business uh that we must attend to tonight um do i hear a motion to adjourn the meeting I move that we adjourn the meeting, but don't forget next month, August 15th at the yes. Marseille. Yes, yeah. next, but I move that we adjourn. Second. Okay. Second, okay. Yeah. Before we, we do the vote on that, um, yes, next month we are back in person. We have a hybrid meeting at the Hotel Marseille, August 15th. Uh, so I hope to see everyone in person. And if you can't make it in person, please, uh, join us online. And I'm very excited about all of our wonderful candidates. I'm extremely excited about the coordinated campaign. And so you're going to be hearing a lot from us on the next steps. Uh, we're going to be out there sweating, knocking on doors, making calls, texting, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of great things going on. Thank you, Representative Bloom and Representative Geller for joining us tonight. And thank you to all the candidates who are here tonight and, and their representatives. Um, all right. Um, any objection to adjourning the meeting? Hearing none, the meeting is <laughs> at 8.40 p.m. Thank you all so much. Oh. Thank you. Marseille Hotel, Marseille Hotel.